This is BBC Radio. Six, 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 six. Right now, it's Matt Everett's The First Time with Liam Gallagher. Hello, I'm Matt Everett and welcome to The First Time here on Six Music. This is the series where we meet some of the most influential and best-loved musicians around and look at the seminal first musical moments that shaped their lives and their careers. This week's guest is undeniably the finest rock and roll singer of his generation. When he found fame in 1994, he represented a new kind of star, a mix of classic singers like Lydon or Lennon with the swagger of Ian Brown. Unpretentious, unapologetic and loud. His band split in 2009, but not before they sold around 70 million records, released some classic singles, played some of the biggest shows the UK has ever witnessed and changed the music world forever. My guest on the first time this week is Liam Gallagher. Here we talk about Liam's earliest musical passions, his first single, his first gig, which was the Stone Roses, no less, and his very earliest vocal performances. We also discuss Oasis's first release, his own key influences, the Sex Pistols, George Harrison and Bob Marley, and the moment that he first realised that Oasis were going to break up. Plus, following a number one album and a series of sold-out UK arena shows, we also talk about Liam's own solo career and the first album to come out under his name, As You Were. But I started by asking Liam, as I do with all my guests, when was he first aware of music? Very first time I was aware of music, right, so my dad was a bit of a, fancied himself as a bit of a DJ, an Irish country and western kind of DJ, so he'd always play that kind of music around my house. My mum wasn't really, she fancied Mick Jagger, but she wasn't really like, in a, like a big fan of music. I mean, she's sure she liked it, but she was not as much as my dad, so that was the first time I was really aware of it. Like, the first time it ever really, I mean, obviously I got into, I was into football more than... Music and all there's lots of people that go, oh, I was into the Beatles when I was six, good for you and all that, but I was not, like, you know what I mean? I was, like, really into football and just all that stuff. The first time anything really connected in my head, I got I got in a bit of trouble at school, I got wax on the head with this hammer. I woke up in hospital and at first I was going out with this girl at the time and she was into Madonna and that. So anyway, the first time I kind of re anything really went in my head and went, actually, it actually stuck was when the first time I heard Madonna and it was like a virgin. That was the first time I went, oh, this is actually all right. Other than that, music was just going in there and out there and I wasn't interested. And that was the first time. It's a good song, that. Yeah, it's classic. So, also, by the way, what, an actual hammer? Yeah, proper hammer, yeah. <laughs> Who did that? Well, I had a little fight at school in, uh, when I was at school and that with these lads and one of them whipped out an hammer and could have been a sax. So I'm quite happy it was just a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> first single you owned? First single I owned. First, yours, si first yeah. single. I mean, first band that I ever really got into was The Roses, and the first record I bought was probably The Stone Rose. I know a lot of people go, you liar. <laughs> it was like Whitney Houston or something like that, but it wasn't. It was like, I think it was The Stone Roses' first album. That was round about the time I was like kind of digging music, you know what I mean? That's a good place to start. Mate, yeah, and it's a good place to end as well. They're, they're my band, man. That album changed my life. It was the first, that was the thing, that was my blueprint of music, you know what I mean? And whenever. Not that I ever feel in doubt, but the Roses, man, they're constantly there, you know what I mean? They, they made my record collection, you know what I mean? Was it that, hearing it and knowing about them and going, they're from here? Yeah. Well, I remember the first tune was I Want to Be Adored. I remember we was, I was, I think I was still in school anyway, around about that time. And I remember my mate going like that, he going, oh, you got to check this band out, the Stone Roses, it's called it. And I thought it was I Want to Be a Dog. And obviously, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's a strange title and that. But anyway, yeah, got into the Roses, man, and that was it. And that that sent, sent me on my way. Did you see him live early on? Yeah, I seen him in 89, just before the album come out. Oh, where was that? That was International One in Longsight. What do you remember from the gig? I got in I got in there just as they were coming on. They had the bells. Ian Brown used to come on with these mare bells. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. And I remember having two joints. Didn't have much money. My mum had lent me, like, I think she let me 15, she gave me 15 quid. I think I bought a ticket for a tenner, bought a pint of Largo down the front, having it, and that was it. Blew me, blew me away, you know what I mean? They looked like us, you know what I mean? They looked like... You look like people that I hung out with, you know what I mean? That's how we dressed, you know what I mean? Was that the first gig you went to? Yeah, first gig. When was the idea that you could sing? When did you first... When I went to see the Stone Roses. It's all tied up to that. All tied to that, man. <laughs> I, look, I remember looking at it just going, I, I could do that, man. <laughs> I could definitely do that. Even though he's a good singer and that, you know, everyone digs him out sometimes. That He's real for a start. And I just thought... I could definitely do that, man. That is something I could do. I've got the clothes, so that's all. I've got the hair cut. All I've got to do is open my mouth. Where's the microphone? Bring me a microphone! <laughs> and that was it. But yeah, that was the first thing, man. That was the first time I really, like, got into it. 
When did you... You mentioned the microphone. When was the first time you I held it? I sang with the microphone. Yeah. Right, that was when I joined the band. Obviously, they were called The Rain. Mm -hmm. But we, before we go any further, we had to stop that name. I was never in Rain. We were in Oasis. The day I joined, it was Oasis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the first time I think we went rehearsing in a place in Longsight. I think we had to pay like some money to get use it when it weren't being used about three in the afternoon or something. That was the first time I sang into a mic. Can't remember. I mean, yeah, it was interesting. Cause like I mean, but I, I, I had the confidence, man. I just thought I knew I had to do better work than that. Mm. I felt comfortable up there, man. Without yeah. a doubt. Without a doubt. Just like, then again, it was like, right now, you brought me the microphone, now bring me the people. <laughs> do you know what I mean? What, was there a point when you first thought, this, this is, uh, other people are going to get this. What we're doing here, this is, this is going to... I reckon it was probably when, like, bef you know, before Noel joined, we had a couple of tunes that we, we weren't really that good, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, we, you know, I've heard, like I said, I've heard worse, you know what I mean? But I knew that we definitely needed some proper, proper songs and none of us were really good songwriters and I just knew our kid would be like, he'd be a little bit jealous and he'd be thinking, right, like, he's in a band. Because he, he was always writing songs and he'd been in a few little bands, but he never really, he, they never really amounted so much, you know what I mean? He just makes around the corner and that. So I just knew if I get him in this band, we'll be away. And then obviously when he started writing the songs, I knew that would be, we'd be big, man. Yeah. But obviously, you know, you've got to put your time in as well, you know what I mean? There's no part of having good songs, you've got to do the rehearsals. And we, as Oasis, we rehearsed, man, non-stop, eight days a week, man, you know what I mean? We were in that boardwalk. This is one of the legends, isn't it? Again, it's just kind of like, it was like, there was nothing else to do yeah. around here, but we believe in this, so we are going to totally, put in man. the hours. Totally, I remember it was the time around the Hacienda and all that tackle, and all my mates, there was only, say, out of, out of like 20 of us, there was probably three of us that were into like guitar music. The rest were all just into doom, doom, doom. So while they were all going to the Hacienda, they'd come down to our room in the boardwalk. They'd go, you coming out? And we'd be like, ah, no, 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 go, come on. We've got, you know, come on, let's go over there. I'm like, ah. It was just across the road from the Hacienda. And we'd be like, ah, no, we're staying here and we're doing this. We're doing these tunes, you know what I mean? They'd be like, ah, you're like mental, see ya. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we grafted, man. You mentioned the Beatles. We have to talk about the Beatles. Yeah. If it's a show about the music that you love, what was yeah. the first Beatles song that you heard and thought? That's my band. I, I, I don't think it'd be the Beatles. I reckon it'd probably be Imagine. I remember my mum my mom come downstairs. I mean, going back to that then, to then the first music you heard, you know what I mean? I remember, I don't know what, my mum come downstairs one Christmas morning. It was round about, I think it must have been the time he got shot. So I'd have been eight and there's a Christmas tree in the corner with all the presents and she's come down and I'm just staring at the TV watching John Lennon on the box and that was, that's what she remembered anyway. She was going, I wasn't asked about the presents. I was just staring at the TV watching the video of Imagine. So that was the first kind of song from Lennon that really hit me, man. How many Beatles did you meet? Did you meet George and Paul? I met, I met John a few times. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I met, who've I met? I met Paul, I've met Ringo. I mean, I met McCartney a few times and he was mega as well, you know what I mean? He's top, top man. What was that like? Tell me about the first meeting with Matt. First time I met him was in, where did I meet him? First time I met him was in LA, in Capitol Studio. Zach was playing with us, so he's come in to see Zach. We had a photograph with him. And then we, we were doing some kind of bass. I think it was on one of my songs called um, "The Boy with the Blues." And he was going, oh, "The bass, you know, you know, it's not that, you know, it's not too great and all that." I was like, oh, "Well, you know, you're next door. Why don't you go and get your bass and put it on there?" And he was like, "Nah." He got he, <laughs> he, he wriggled out of it. You know what I mean? But that was the first time I met him. And then the next time I met him was in where was it? In the Albert Hall. The manager we had for BDI was called Scott Rogers, and he managed. He still manages McCartney. And I've gone down there. My son's school teacher, it was his 70th or his 60th, and I said, I'll get you an autograph, don't know how we do this, but I bowled in there, I said to Paul McCartney after the kick, I said, yeah, mate, is there any chance, look, I won't be in there, I won't mind you too long, is there any chance you could just sign this, a programme for my school's, my kid's uh, headmaster? And he went, yeah, 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 to David, blah, blah, blah. I went, nice one, I'm out of here, I legged it. And he's going, come on, slow down, slow down, where are you going? He goes, you're always in a rush, you. I was like, yeah, but I know what it's like, you've just done a gig, you just want to chill out. And he's going, do you like margaritas? I was like, ah, no, no, I've eaten, I've had, I had that before, man, I don't eat at this time of the night. He was like, he was like he went, the drink, you silly ass. <laughs> and his mate, his mate makes margaritas, so then he whips out of margaritas and that was it. I thought, I better get out, I'll have one with you, <laughs> Macca, and then I'm out of here because I'll start licking you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was a macarita. Yeah, it was a macarita, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was it, yeah, he's top man. Another first, first review you got as Oasis. First review, I remember, might have been in the Manchester Evening News, which was pretty good, actually. Mm -hmm. I think we'd done a competition where it was like the sound of mute or the sound of the city, sound city or something where you... But that was the first review. I remember the first review in NME where they slagged us. What did they say? They slagged us. Did you ever pay much attention to the Yeah, press? man. Yeah, I'm, I always... Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, 
you know, you soon get over it, you know what I mean? Because you know, you believe how, you know, you know how good you are, you know how shit yeah. you are, you know what I mean? So I do, I, you definitely read it, don't you, to see if people are getting it, but if someone digs you out or not, you just move on, don't you? What do you remember about recording Supersonic? That's first single. Right, it? that was in Wales, wasn't it? So I think Sawmills? Mom, yeah, Sawmills, I remember, yeah, beautiful pl- part of the world down in Wales, beautiful, love being in the studio that time, still do. F- uh, first time we got in the studio with a band, lots of weed... <laughs> lots of country air, lots of drinking. Just that was good, man. It was like the first time like we'd been in the studio, so it was like it was like, look, we were like, we're, we think we're a pretty decent live band. You know what I mean? Let's go and people have shown interest, so let's go and let's go and prove them how good we are. And it was nice to hear the music coming through the desk and with all the trimmings and all that. So yeah, I remember them days pretty good, man. You remember doing the vocal take? Probably not, but I probably, I'm sure it was good. <laughs> I, I was good back then days, man. It was probably one or two takes, man. That's another. I don't know, myth or whatever, another, you know, one take, two take. I'd probably, I'd say three at the most, you know what I mean? If you do three, you can definitely get it together, man. You see, normally this, the middle of the second one's probably the one in it, you know what I mean? But no more than three, not not a chance, mate. If you've got me in there doing four or five, I'm out of there. <laughs> it's got to be three or, the three's a lot. You know, you know, you know, you hear these people going, take 59, it's like, yeah, mate, go on. <laughs> You know what I mean? Maybe this is not for you, you know what I mean? This might, this might not be for you, this, this gig, you know what I mean? Let's do another first. Let's do when that first album came out, the first Oasis record. The response. I remember seeing, I remember the cover of the Face magazine, it was a picture of you, and it said... The Sex Beatles. The Sex Beatles. Yeah. And I just thought, that's a good headline. Yeah, I like that. that I, I like I, that I, one. I, I, like, I wear that every day. That's where I'm at, you know what I mean? I am I'm massive into the Beatles, massive into the Sex Pistols and that, and like, I'm somewhere between, well, I think I am anyway, or I like to tell me, so I'm somewhere between Lennon and Lydon. Vocally, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I loved that. Uh, good clothes as well. That was the first time, well, I think it was the only time we got styled. <laughs> really? Some, some geezer whipped out this calf down and that, and like some cravat and all that, and started putting makeup on and stuff. I was going, oh, with the makeup. I'll wear the calf down. <laughs> but yeah, that was for the face, wasn't it? Yeah. I was trying to imagine you in a calf. Yeah. Like, because it was just yeah. the shoulder. I'm trying to imagine what the. What oh, the rest it was. Of it was. Like. Pro- no, down at the knees, man. Down at the knees. <laughs> I definitely look like a waiter anyway, but I, I like that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, when the album come out, just lots of drinking, I guess. You know what I mean? It's like it's like you know it. Like you look back in hindsight and you think, I wish I was a bit more, a bit more sober and that because there were good times. But just, I mean, we were probably on tour at the time. You know what I mean? Obviously, mm. and he's just caught up in the touring, and before you know it, your album comes out. And but it was big, I guess. But I can't remember much about it. You mentioned the Pistols. Let's pick a Sex Pistols track. Sex Pistols track. In I mean, yeah, submission's good, but I do like Bodies. I mean, the beginning of Bodies, is for me. Where it's at, and then it gets in there. She was a girl from Birmingham. You know what I mean? It's a bit, it's a bit like he's just been electrocuted, and that. You know what I mean? He's got his fingers in the sockets. But they're opening that, that riff there is where it's at. This is the first time with me, Matt Everett, and my guest Liam Gallagher, and that is exactly how much we can play of Bodies by the Sex Pistols because of the heroic swearing that occurs any moment now. We'll have more from Liam Gallagher talking about the end of Oasis and his new status as a solo star, all after the Six Music News. I'm Matt Everett and this is the first time on Six Music where we look at the key first moments in an artist's career. And my guest this week is Liam Gallagher. And that was Morning Glory, taken obviously from Oasis's second album, What's the Story, Morning Glory, from September 1995. An album that remains as the fifth biggest selling album in UK chart history. It's gone 14 times platinum and shifted 4.7 million copies in the UK and over 22 million copies worldwide. Which made it seem like a good idea to ask Liam about his first ever royalty check. Oh, I don't know about a check. I'm still waiting for it, mate. <laughs> I mean, no, the first thing, I remember the first thing I bought with it was yeah. a scooter, a 1954 Lambretta. Which I've, yeah, which I've still got. Nice. And that was on the, that was on the cover of um, Definitely Maybe. There's some shots of it on there. That was the first thing I bought. And then we got a big one and I went and bought my mum an house. But she didn't want it. She's like, I, I don't want that house. Like, it was a lovely little cottage up in Eaton Moor. Beautiful. So I'll give her the keys and she's going, what do I want this for? I was like, oh, it's better than the one that you're in, isn't it? And she goes, no, I don't want it. So anyway, I had to sell it back to the geezer. She didn't want it. And she goes, all I want is a brand new gate. Cheap date, mate. You know what I mean? So I bought it. I went, I'll tell you what, I can do better than that. I'll buy you a fence and a gate. And that's all she's ever wanted. Seriously? Yeah, man, she's not into it, man. She's like, I, I don't want a new... What do I want that house for now? I'm quite happy in my house. She took a fence, man. She's like, are you trying to slag my house off? Like, it's a nice house, but that one's better. 
and he's got a bigger garden than you lunatic you know what I mean and it's a bit safer than like you know what I mean she's like ah, no so she's still in the same house with the same fence and the same gate she's a legend that's amazing I love that mm. that's actually quite sweet isn't it like look I'm, I'm fine yeah man you, she's like ah, her thing was like look your life's going to change and good luck to you and all that and uh, my life stays the same man she's not caught up with all that razzmatazz <laughs> Do you think you've got a lot to... I mean, obviously, everyone's got a lot to thank their mum for. But, yeah, you totally. Know, do you think there's... there's She, totally. she helps you get yeah, through all this she stuff? Keeps, she keeps me grounded as much as she can. Obviously, you do... You do... Um, veer off. You do veer off every now and again. <laughs> everyone does, you know what I mean? Whether you're a florist or a chocolate maker or a watchmaker, you know, everyone's... We're only human, but she does definitely keep me grounded, man. I've Definitely, she's no-nonsense kind of thing, you know what I mean? And, I, you know, I've been caught up in the whole side of this business or whatever it is this show business but I certainly and I've cert I've learned very quickly you know what I mean you can only get fooled once you know what I mean I don't mm. I don't tend to go to these celebrity parties it's just not for me I went once in the 90s and it wasn't for me man I mean there was that point when you were on the cover the cover of the sun for getting a skinhead for yeah. getting a haircut do you know what I mean and you're like, it's ridiculous isn't I it? mean you know great band yeah. is that the most important thing that's happening exactly. in the world exactly. I mean does, does that were you able I mean, well there's a lot of people now I, I, I made a cup of tea the other day in Paris oh yeah on BBC <laughs> I play and now everyone I walk down the street everyone's going ah, make us a cup of tea I take two with mine I'm like ah, you all grow up <laughs> do you know what I mean it's, it's just mad, you know what I mean? People like stopping the car, going, ah, stop that, mate, the way you made that cup of tea the other day. I'm like, ah, shut up, mate. So, yeah, very strange times, but, you know, good at the same time. What was the first song of yours, the first song that you wrote, ended up on an Oasis? Right, the first song was a song called Little James, mm -hmm. which was about my stepson, which I'm very, you know, I love him dearly, and he's not little anymore. <laughs> we were in the south of France, and we'd rented out, we were, I don't know what album we were doing, it was after Beer Now. So I was playing, I remember, and I, a lot of people always go, oh, you know, like, you know, I was trying to get in right. I was quite happy singing the old songs, you know what I mean? I was quite happy being the singer. He's doing the graft, I'm quite happy doing the singing. Happy. So anyway, I was sitting out in the garden one morning, I was playing his guitar very badly, <laughs> and I'm sort of just going, you know, James, singing like that, and he walks past and he goes, what's that you're playing there? I said, I don't know, I've been fighting about with it a bit. And he goes, right, he goes, write some words, but he goes, we'll do it after dinner. And that's how the story starts, you know what I mean? That, that? That's how it got. That's how I got in. I never was really walking around. People think I was walking around going, yeah, I know, I watched some, I watched that writing songs. He was the one that instigated it, you know what I mean? So we did it after dinner, and it, it's all right, it's good. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I'll be playing it in an arena near you this December. Sold out. <laughs> That was the first one I did, yeah. So he opened, it's all his fault, mate. <laughs> I mean, I was never one of them, like, you know what I mean? Going like, I want to I wanna be a songwriter. I was quite happy singing the songs, getting off my head and doing all that, you know what I mean? I was quite happy with that. But as you know, as you, as you know, every now and again, you'll see a guitar and you'll try and just learn and master the art, you know what I mean? And even to this day, I'm still learning and I'll, 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 I'll be amazing by the time I leave this planet. George Harrison, another one on your list of... Yep. People that mean a lot to you. What's the what's the Harrison track? All uh, things must pass. The album I reckon is the probably the best. Out. After Imagine, I mean, I think it's actually better than Imagine. Yeah, I would say that. I think it's a beautiful record. So the tune on that for me is isn't it a pity? That is. Oh. A, I mean, obviously there's loads and all that, but um, isn't it a pity, man? Just just does me in, man. When I hear that, yeah, it's an absolute classic. When was the point when you thought this is done? Because You've had the right. breakups, and there must be that one where you're like, guess, uh, "Okay, it? that's it now. That when, is actually it." Yeah. Was it after the big final round, or was it during oh, the, the round? Oh no, I, it was before that, man. Right. I, I I smelt a rat before that, man. I smelt a rat round about. I tell you when I smelt a rat. We done a gig on that last tour we done. So I don't, we were going to end in Reading or Leeds or whatever it was, or T V. Might have been doing that, or one of them anyway. And we think we done a gig in Bridlington Spa. And I smell a little rat there, man. I overheard a conversation of like, well, you know, you know, you know, you got to do it all now. It's now or never kind of thing with Noel and the manager. Really? And I'd walked into a room like that, and he kind of shut up the shop and all that, and he were talking about renting an house out in LA and getting out there with Dave Sardi to do something. So I kind of walked in. And I went, okay. And I just did, because you know, when you just know. Now, I might have been paranoid, I, you know, but that's it. But I just found a thing, and I thought, you know what? He's gonna pull the plug at this last gig and go, that's it. And obviously, obviously we had to do that gig in Paris. And I just, I don't know, I just felt someone, I felt someone was, so I just, you know, I just, you know, we just know. So yeah. you think it was... Oh, he was definitely planning on it. Mate, listen, we've been around, I can go on forever about this. There is just <laughs> no way that that, that Oasis broke up after the Paris thing. It was, 
it was it was pre it was gonna it was planned to do that you know what i mean it's the way i see it you know what i mean so it definitely was there was a lot a lot of planning went into breaking up oasis it didn't just happen man is it a shame I think but it's a completely shame. shame man because it was a good band and it meant a lot to a lot of people and it was good times and if you want to go and do stuff and do solo, you know, you go and do that stuff, you know what I mean? If it takes you 10 years to get it off your chest, you don't, I don't think we should have broke up, you know what I mean? I still think we should have, everyone could have gone off and do their things, whether Bonehead wants to be a, you know, a ventriloquist or, <laughs> well, he were in the band at the time, or I want to go and, you know, play tennis, you know what I mean? Or whatever, I just think there was no need for the band to break up, you know what I mean? I think we meant a lot more to people than for it to just fall apart like that, in my opinion. And then Barney after Barney after Barney. Barney after Barney, yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Well, you know, like I've said before... I'm sorry, the, uh, you know... Cause no, but like, you know, but like, yeah. I, I don't mind speaking about it. A lot of people shut up, shut up about it. I, I, I love the Oasis. And like I said before, the good times outweighed the bad times. Mm. Bazillions, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it's like, at least it happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And but the it's, a it's a shame that it, it ended like that, but that's the way it is. And for you, the door's not shut. Well, it is shut because we're not speaking, are we, at the moment? But, you know, at the end of the day, I've got an album coming out. He's got an album coming out. Gallagher, the Gallagher brothers are um, doing some good stuff at the moment. If the Oasis ain't happening, the second best thing is two solo albums from us both. Welcome back to The First Time with me, Matt Everett, and my guest, Liam Gallagher. So Liam's first solo album, As You Were, came out earlier this year and went straight to number one, outselling the rest of the top 15 combined. Now, the record saw Liam working with producer Greg Kirsten, famous for his work with Adele and Sia and Beck and Ellie Goulding and the Foo Fighters. I asked him how they first met. I definitely needed help with it, without a doubt. I definitely need, I definitely need to... Uh, I can write a couple of rock and roll little numbers, you know what I mean? But I definitely think 12 of them on our album is not going to really do it for people, you know what I mean? So I definitely needed to go in with some people who can, you know, write big songs, you know what I mean? We flew at LA, met Greg, and he was cool, man. He just went, he went, had a cup of tea, we had a little chat, Andrew White was there, and he played us the chords of Wall of Glass. He goes, what you thinking at? I went, right up my street, let's get cracking. <laughs> and we had that, we had that written and recorded in one day, you know Really? What I mean? Yeah. Then we got on the next one, the next day was Paper Crown. So we'd done three in three days. And then i come back to England, and then I got the bug, then I thought, right, I'd already written two, so that was five. And then I had a bit of a spurt where I'd started finishing songs that I'd had messing about. And then before you know it, we had like 15 songs, you know what I mean? So it's, it all kind of happened really easy. Do you think there's, is there some lyrical theme? Is there something that ties all the songs together? Um, there's a lot of like self-reflecting and that on it, I think. And then there's a lot of, there's a lot of, it's pretty angry in places, you know what I mean? A bit, it's a bit pissed off in places. Then it's a bit like, you know, shit happens and we move on, you know what I mean? Kind of thing. People call it an apology, but you know. It is what it is. I mean, I, I know I, I know who I'm apologising to, and it ain't Noel Gallagher, probably to my kids, you know what I mean, and, you know, people that are really dear to me. So there's a lot of that on there, and there's a lot of let's get cracking, you know what I mean? We've had four years, or I've had four years out of the, not doing anything, twiddling my thumbs, bored out of my mind. Let's get back to business, man. We need to make some proper tunes, and I'm the man at the moment. I've got a good voice, voice is sounding half decent, so I'm ready to go, man. I was at Glastonbury this year, and I was going around speaking to lots of people in the audience about what they were looking forward to seeing. It was interesting when your name came up, it was like lots of the people our age were just like, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing Liam. Yeah. And lots of the 14, 15 year olds, because they've been brought up. Well, yeah, they're saying, yeah their, their dads probably were the first ones to come and see us. No, it's got, it's been good, man. Fingers crossed so far, there's been a good response. The people that have been coming to the gigs have been good. It's been good crowds. And another great thing, no one's bringing camera phones. For some reason, <laughs> that seems to be dying down, man. Does that get on your nerves? Not really, no, but... You know, it's just like anybody else, but I've noticed it. I've noticed the shift, man. A lot of people come to my gigs anyway. They've been like, they've, they're in the moment, you know what I mean? There's none of this, like, with the phones out, you know what I mean? They're like, they're proper jumping about and having a good time. I can't imagine what your life must be like walking down the street very, with, camera, with camera phones these days. Yeah. It's not, you can it's do anything not, in the night, isn't no one had a oh, picture of it. Oh, mate. <laughs> imagine Keith Moon, man, with them. It, imagine them days. Yeah, they are a pain in the ass, but what can you do, man? You know what I mean? The worst thing about it is that people just come up and go, selfie. They don't even turn around and go, oh, it's you. How are you? What you up to? I'm, I'm like that. They take a selfie, then they're off. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've got 10 minutes to spare. Do you fancy a beer or something? I can have a chat if you want. They're just... But that's the way of the world, isn't it? You know what I mean? What can you do? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I am happy, mate. I'm a made-up man to have a record. Do you know what I mean? I love touring. Got lots of gigs coming up. Because them big arenas, man, that's what it's about for me. Yeah. It's nice playing the small things and all that tackle, but you do if you're there all year, it is a bit of a struggle, you know what I mean? But they're big arenas, man. I'm going to I'm gonna rip them a new arse, man. Let's pick the last song. Right, we're going to finish this lovely little shindig and chat with uh, a tune by Bob Marley. His real name's Robert, by the way. <laughs> Breaking news. And it's called Natural Mystic.
When did you first hear that song? Has it always been one you've loved? I guess I probably heard it. Like, again, when I started building my record collection when I was a young man, you know what I mean? So around about that time, beautiful song. It's good to speak to you. Thank you, and good to speak to you, man. <laughs>